okay so last class what we discussed actually was we did an introduction to why uh, you know why cell is called the fundamental unit of life then we saw some amount of history that who discovered cells and some videos on the basic history part then we we discussed or we saw a slide on unicellular and multicellular cells after that we did let me just take you back on right yeah so after multicellular unicellular cells we started with the cell structure so we said that every cell has three features so the cell can be anywhere it can have any function and it will have three features for sure and those three features or characteristics are it will definitely have a nucleus maman one more thing i found an exception to the cell theory okay i found it on internet the virus ma okay yeah virus yeah yeah so virus itself is like a completely different uh uh what should i say they are not even called cells they are called organisms uh why is that is because they are on the border line of living and non living things so virus is an exception for yes. almost everything <laughs> yes correct okay yeah so we discussed this these three features nucleus plasma membrane and cytoplasm so first we'll cover plasma membrane we started a little bit on it then we were discussing how things uh, how substances move in and out of the cell right yeah so once we do that we'll talk about cytoplasm then we we'll start with the different organelles yeah we covered all this we have to do osmosis Yes. Ma'am, what will we do? Osmosis first. Will we read all of this and go on in all of the slides and then do plasma membrane? Because like we already done osmosis in school, so in the plasma membrane they are not going to teach us in school because we had done it last year. So I think we should first do osmosis and then and these cells are then. Yeah, yeah, we completed till here, right? Like last class. So I was just giving you all a recap because I think one or two did not. revise so i was giving you a recap we start with osmosis and i won't do what i did last class again right okay so yeah diffusion and osmosis are basically the two main methods how substances move in and out of the cell of course there are more methods like you might uh, learn about uh, something called active transport also where energy is required to move substances in and out ma'am right? we worked we are taught the active transport in school Okay, you were taught active transport, and okay. also that gradient. Gradient, okay. Yeah, gradient is basically uh, anything like a scale. So you, if you have a color gradient, you gradient. Okay, what gradient means is basically something like a scale. Like you would have heard color gradient more frequently. Yes, ma'am. So that basically means if I have a color gradient, means basically you're going from white to let's say black. or maybe say light red to dark red or any color like that so there it doesn't go directly from here to here there is like a scale kind of thing different colors then you reach the final color of your choice same thing happens when you talk about concentration or you talk about pressure or anything so gradient basically means you're going from your starting point to the ending point passing through different uh, things so if i say concentration gradient and if i say this has the highest concentration right and i say this part has the lowest concentration so how it will go is basically if this is yeah this is highest then there will be little bit lesser molecules here okay then there will be let's say four here if there were six initially then five here then four here then there would be 3 then there would be 2 and then finally there would be 1 like that it goes so this scale kind of a thing is what is called a gradient okay yeah. right so active transport is not really required at this stage but yeah that is also another method or means but in cell no, we are we are taught the total uh, about active transport yeah 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 you will be taught because that is a part of plasma membrane but it's not 
really required in detail. If you just know the name active transport is sufficient. Okay. Right. So we discussed one of the methods, which was uh, diffusion. And now we start with osmosis. Right. So osmosis, this is the important part of the chapter because uh, many application based questions you get from osmosis itself, where you have to understand the different terms. First, you have to understand the definition of osmosis. Then you have to understand the different terms like tonicity, etc. What is hypotonic, etc. And then what happens to the cell. Right. So once this uh, three things are clear in your head, then any question I ask you, I give you any situation, you will be able to answer it correctly. Right. Okay, so this entire slide is important. I would like you to take down all the points. Okay, so basically it is a special case of diffusion. Why do we say it is a special case of diffusion is because in diffusion, all, uh, all three phases, which is basically solids, liquids and gases move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, right? But in osmosis, only water molecules move through a selectively permeable membrane, right? Yeah, I think we discussed selectively permeable membrane last class, so it should be clear, right? What is the difference between selectively permeable and semi-permeable, etc. Okay, so the keywords in this definition are what are highlighted in bold or whatever is in bold. Those are the keywords when you write the definition. These three statements, these three words are required, right? Movement of water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane along the concentration gradient till equilibrium is reached. What is equilibrium is basically you will have same concentration on both sides. So suppose, and let me give you an example, right? If suppose there is a block like this, okay? And there is high concentration here, low concentration here. So osmosis and this, this let's say is a semi-permeable membrane, okay, a selectively permeable membrane. Correct. So osmosis is basically movement of water molecules from here to here. H2O is moving from here to here. And equilibrium basically means now both sides, if suppose there were six molecules here and three molecules here. So now both sides there are, <clears throat> I don't know, whatever, let's say, I don't know uh, how many moved or whatever. Both sides have six. Okay. So basically equilibrium means same concentration. Right. So this process will keep happening till both sides have the same concentration. OK, now when you talk about osmosis, you have two types which are there mainly. First one is when water moves inside the cell. So in cells, what happens is your plasma membrane, because if this is your cell, for example, and you have your plasma membrane. OK, let me make it close back. Right, so every cell has a plasma membrane like we discussed. So now what happens is this plasma membrane becomes your selectively permeable membrane here. That's how water molecules move in and out through the cell via osmosis. Okay, so end osmosis may what happens is there, there is water molecules outside. They move inside the cell. That's end osmosis. Endo means inside. And the same thing when water molecules leave the cell. This is exosmosis. This is endosmosis. Okay. Remember these, these keywords or these uh, tiny meanings, right? Endo means inside and exo means outside. Exo or X means outside. You can remember like that. When you remember the word exit only, right? Exit means leaving. You're leaving the place or whatever. You're leaving the class. Whatever. You're leaving something is exiting. So exosmosis exo ideally means water would be leaving from wherever it is, whichever cell it is in, or whichever, if you're taking examples of grapes, raisins, etc., water will be leaving that grape raisin. So when it is leaving, it is exosmosis? And if it is like absorbing it, then it will become endosmosis. Correct, correct. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. So now I'll uh, explain this figure which is there here. Okay. I miss you need to write this, right? Yes, yes. You need to take down all the points. Just give us two minutes. Yes, yes. I'm waiting. Oh, I wrote plasma membrane here. <laughs> God. Okay. Plasma membrane. Okay. Uh, plasma membrane. This is your cell. You can take this down. This will help you understand these terms better. If you want, you can take this down. Okay, I'll quickly tell you what this diagram here is trying to say. Right. So this diagram basically here, the all these technical terms are there. It's the same thing, whatever I just explained. If you write it in your own words, it's fine. This is a more technical way of stating or the definition of endosmosis. That inflow means uh, movement inside. It's called inflow. Outflow will be movement outside. So when water molecules, you don't need to remember solvent, etc. right now, it's only water. So when water molecules move into a cell from outside, it's called ex endosmosis. And when the water molecules leave the cell, it's called exosmosis, right? Okay. Now what happens here is in endosmosis, when you are adding water to something, when you add water to anything, it's going to, the volume is going to increase, right? Suppose I had, let's say something which was of this size and now i add water to it so definitely it is going to swell up isn't it you you can take the example of anything you just say suppose for example uh, before lunch and after lunch so before eating lunch you are going to be like you you are going to be hungry or you are going to weigh less if you weigh yourself you'll weigh a little bit less but after eating lunch you are going to weigh a little bit more that's exactly what will happen right you add anything into something the volume of the final uh, substance or cell or organism whatever you are adding it into will increase same thing happens in case of endosmosis if water is entering the cell the volume is going to increase and the cell is going to swell up okay and in exosmosis, what happens is when water leaves, right? When water leaves the cell, the cell goes back to its original shape or sometimes it goes, it even shrinks further, right? So in exosmosis, the cell will always shrink and in endosmosis, the cell will always swell. So wherever you have written this, at this point also, the cell swells and cell shrinks. Okay. Okay, have you taken this down? Shall I go ahead? Yeah, do it once. Okay, okay, I'll wait. Kushagra, you're here, right? I don't think I've seen your face last class also. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Tell me once you all are done so I can go ahead. Done, ma'am. Done. Okay. I'm done as well.
dan enam dan oke okay. dan dan oh, oke okay. majority dan yeah. great oke okay. yes now we come to what is tonicity so tonicity is just uh, it means whatever or right, for your simplicity or for your understanding i have given the definition here as well tonicity is basically relative concentration of solutes dissolved in solution so what does it mean is basically when you have two different uh tk let me explain these three words also then right uh you have let's say salt okay and then you have let's say drawing little bit bigger molecules water okay and you mix it and you get okay right suppose you have salt okay a normal table salt normal salt which we use in food etc right salt you have and you have water okay and then you mix the two suppose you take one spoon salt in one glass of water and you mix the two right so you get a mixture of salt and water so this is what is called okay uh, some other color yeah so this uh, particles or this a uh, substance which you add ideally which is solid is called a solute okay the liquid mixture whatever liquid you are adding is what is called as the solvent something you are mixing it in usually it is a liquid in very rare cases it is solid uh, most of the time it's either a liquid or a gas your solvent will usually be a liquid or a gas and this finally what you have got is basically what is called a solution okay i'm not sure you might have done this in chemistry uh, have you um, not yet not yet theek hai okay right so if possible if you can make this tiny diagram in your book it would be great so that you understand these words whenever you keep seeing solute solute somewhere you know what we are talking of right okay so anything the solute can be any substance you can mix uh, suppose i don't know what you all li like drinking tang rasna any powder like that which you all have you know uh, glucon d maybe nothing no glucon d glucon d okay glucon d good example right so when you have glucon d okay or maybe you have tang or you have rasna i'm not sure of any other powder okay i can't remember right so whenever you have this what you do is you take a spoonful of this okay yeah i can take examples of other things as well right uh, maybe you might be drinking one of these bone vita or comp salt water salt water salt water sugar water yes yes or lakes okay anything any of these even one also if you are aware of just use that to relate to the example right so whenever you are making a, uh, you are making a drink with one of these what you do is you usually take a spoonful of whatever powder it is you want to make the drink out of so that powder which you are taking is your solute Okay, whatever it may be, bone vita, gum, plant, glucon, the uh, sugar water or salt. If you are making just salt water or sugar water, whatever sugar, salt. Okay, let me include that also. Right. So all these are examples of solutes. And then whatever you are mixing it in, usually bone vita, gum, plant, Horlicks, you mix it in milk, right? And uh, the others you usually have it with water, right? So milk. or water becomes an example of your solvents okay 
yeah for solvent if you remember just some liquid is good enough yeah, you won't be asked uh, asked too much on which solvent is this or identify something like that this is just for your understanding so that when i say low solute you should understand what i'm talking of right it should not be like okay i can't understand what is solute we so, have studied we have studied solutes in yeah. we have studied solutes and solvents in chemistry yes 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 that's what i asked i thought you said no so i was uh, yeah that time i was writing down so i remember right but yeah we have learned the solutes and solvents in chemistry i think in fifth grade um, okay okay as long as you all know that's sufficient right okay right so you all are clear what it is yeah okay so you need to write this hypotonic isotonic and yes 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 we have to okay. write this so give me you can take down what is tonicity also and okay. right so in case anybody is still confused between solute solvent solution you can take down this simplified diagram otherwise if you are clear with it not required right this is for your understand okay so now that you know what is tonicity so usually it is uh, you compare two solutes or two uh, this just two minutes i'm almost done okay okay yeah yeah i'm explaining this slide only okay i'm uh, i'm not going ahead i'm on this slide only right so basically when you say tonicity what i want to say is there will be two solutions involved okay and uh, keep this in mind when you write here no write this in the bracket that two solutions will be involved okay i won't say i won't ask you to compare tonicity of one glass of water and another glass of water that does not make sense right because the concentration of solute in that uh, water will be the same right ideally if you've taken just a glass of water it will be 100% water only nothing else is there in it right okay so usually when you say tonicity there are two solutions involved which means there will be something else you are comparing it with that's what i'm trying to say okay right so once you know that so when i say hypotonic solution right which means there are two solutions and out of those two the one which has lower concentration of solute that one will be called hypotonic now you got it okay isotonic is the one that is the same and hypotonic is one that is higher yes yes correct correct yes so you can break these words also now that you know the meaning of tonic tonic is coming from tonicity right so basically talking about the concentration of two solutions so now that you have two solutions you are comparing them and you are saying okay i have let's say one uh, solution in this and one solution here let's say solution b and this is solution a so now i am saying a has lower solutes than b so i will say a is hypotonic correct i can't just take one a and then be like okay this is hypotonic against what am i comparing it with right okay. yeah so now you can break down this word hypo usually means less wherever you read the word hypo it will always mean less like you have conditions where you have low blood sugar they are called hy hypoglycemia right so hypo if you encounter hypo anywhere it means less iso is always same iso you would have seen in maths also right iso diametric or i'm not sure you would have heard iso somewhere else also iso usually means same and hyper means more we have learned about isotopes and isobars yes see isotopes and isobars so isotopes have same atomic number right so that yes, where... an isobar is like argon and calcium yes isobars have same mass number so now you can break down those words also right okay. so iso usually means same and hyper means more okay so keep this also see once you are clear with all of this now then this table becomes redundant this table is just for you to understand the meaning once you have understood the meaning that okay hypo means less means it will have less concentration of solute then you can write the definition in your own words easily okay. so you don't need to remember another column as such okay and now i have read by to
Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. What what? Ma'am, I have read that when too much water is uh, so some surface uh, to volume over theorem where if too much uh, uh, water and food is intake, then the cell divides. Okay, okay. I'm I'm not sure about that. I'm I haven't come across it. Okay, right. So this is our table. Uh, yeah, the con explanation is there more about this in the next slide as to what happens to the cell. Now, if I'm placing the cell in hypotonic solution, what will happen? Now that we learn about that. Okay, you've taken this table down, right? Can we go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm just. Uh, almost. Almost. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. Make sure you've written two solutions next to tonicity, or basically just write that you are comparing two solutions. Make sure of that you write in this. Yeah. Right, everybody. Shall I go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So now we want to see what happens when I keep the cell in a hypotonic solution. Right. So see, now when I talk about the cell, what happens is you have, suppose, oh, where should I draw? Okay, wait. Let me draw it here. Up. Okay. Now when I talk about a cell, there is something surrounding the cell as well. Suppose this is your surrounding medium. Okay. So now what your solutions become is the solution inside the cell, which is usually water. Right, water and a mix of some minerals, etc. That is your cell matrix. This becomes A, and this becomes what is there outside? What basically surrounding the cell becomes B. So you are getting my point. What I'm saying is I'm comparing whatever is there inside the cell to whatever is there outside the cell. That's how I get my two solutions here. Okay, so when I say I keep a cell in a hypotonic solution, what does that mean is basically if this is my cell, I'll draw it here. Okay, I'll draw one for each of these. When I say I've kept my cell in a hypotonic solution, which means the concentration of that solution inside the cell. Okay, the amount of solutes has is more inside compared to outside. So if this is A and this is B, this green, this is B, I will say A, A has more solutes than B. This is what basically I'm saying. When I say that I have placed a cell in hypotonic solution. Okay, that's what is written here. Medium surrounding the cell has. Yes, you were saying something. No. Okay. Yeah. So the same thing has been written in words here that medium surrounding the cell has higher water concentration. See, if you read the definition for all the hypotonic solution, isotonic and hypotonic. It says that, that there is amount of solute, right? You're talking about the amount of solute. That is why you need to be very clear between the difference between solute and solution, right? So if, if I say something has more solutes, okay, if I say, uh, let's say this is P and this is Q, okay? If I say P has more solutes, 
then q which would have more water content if i say p has more salt suppose i put two spoon salt into this okay and i have put one spoon salt into this then which will have more water content will it be p or q p okay what about the others no it water content i think p will have more water content right okay others uh oh, ma'am q okay oh, ma'am i think q okay वॉटर That's all I'm asking. Hmm. Okay. Okay. ठीक है. Most of you answered, right? Correct. So you, whatever your side was correct, Q will have more water. Right. If you still feel uh, that you know, ma'am is saying something wrong or you know debatable, you can try this experiment at home only. Take. to uh, instead of putting salt put sugar so that you can drink and taste it right if you put salt you won't be able to taste it so take two glasses of water you know in one glass add one spoon of sugar in another glass add two spoons of sugar and you see which tastes sweeter the one which will taste sweeter will have more sugar which means it has lesser water right okay So this is the same principle which is happening in all these three. So this is all. If you understand this, then you will understand what happens if I put it in hypotonic, isotonic, hypertonic, right? Whichever will have lesser water. So if possible, you make a note of this also next to this table or below it. Make a note of this so that whenever you are imagining any situation, that you know, if I tell you I have put raisin in salt water. so that time you can you know you can look back to this example and understand that okay if i put more salt in water that means the amount of water in that solution has decreased right because salt has gone and occupied whatever remaining place is there okay so yeah hypotonic basically means the medium surrounding the cell has higher water concentration so if i am saying if i am saying that this is my cell okay became uh, the color right okay now i am saying there is more water here there is less water here so which direction the water will move will it go into the cell or outside the cell i mean to the cell. into the cell right correct okay into the cell same thing when you talk about isotonic now what happens in isotonic is and yes of course the cell swells like i told you that if you are adding anything into something even if you are adding take your example of humans only as we eat lunch after that our weight will be little bit more right because we've had food or if we drink a glass of water our weight will be a little bit more than it was previously same thing happens to the cell it's going to expand because it took in some amount of water so the cell will swell whereas what happens in isotonic now is that both sides have same concentration which means this solution inside the cell which is a and the solution outside the cell b both are same okay the same concentration is there so ideally what happens or what we say is that there is no movement but actually it just keeps moving to and fro but you don't really see any change so we say no movement right so you can say both that it the water will move in and out of cell at equal rates or there will be no movement even if you say that is fine okay so because there is net net there is no movement the cell size will remain the same there will be no change in the cell no change 
this diagram is not required for you to draw this diagram is simply for your understanding this tiny cell and water entry right okay same thing in hypertonic now i am saying that the cell has more water okay you have a cell you have a cell and you have surrounding medium or something outside it right now i am saying a has more water okay so now what will happen is because the cell has more water compared to outside the water inside the cell moves out so if i am giving out something or i am giving up something i will lose whatever i had right so i will shrink the cell will shrink or basically it will decrease in size that's what shrinks me shrinks means right okay okay if you have taken this table down and if you have understood whatever i said till now i will i have some questions for you right let's see if you can answer in case you have not understood any part tell me so that i can repeat it now only this might be a little confusing right mom please give me two minutes so that i can write this down yes 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 i'll give you two minutes no worries let me know once you have copied this okay then i will give you questions just two three questions i have so done ma'am Done. Okay. Done, everybody. Uh, no, almost done, ma'am. Okay. Done, done. Uh, I'm on the last one. I put on it. Okay. Done, done. Done. Okay. Done, done. Just two minutes, ma'am. I'm almost done. okay you can write the words i mean you don't have to draw these cell diagrams if that is taking you time don't draw this this diagram here it's not required okay 
just one last minute one last minute okay ma'am you can move forward okay sahil you are also done right uh, all Promise. Not done. Okay. No. Okay. The rest of you, if you have your chapter notes next to you, you can read the difference between diffusion and osmosis from the book. By then, your chapter notes, C N. if you open uh, fundamental of fundamental unit of life chapter at the end towards the end there will be tables difference between tables there will be one table for diffusion and osmosis you can read that by the time they are done Ma'am, won't we do the structure and organization of a cell? We will be doing right. We haven't. I, I haven't even finished half of the chapter yet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But you said then we then we will be done. So I was like, what? No chapter or much? No, no, no. I haven't even finished half of the chapter. I said till okay. you fin to till you finish writing. I asked them to read that uh, diffusion difference. I'm done writing, ma'am. Okay, Sahil, are you done? I uh, not yes, no. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is not working. Why? Right? Huh? Right, so there is one small animation which I had attached here. So I don't know why it's not working in a slideshow, but yeah. So this is how basically it is. When you put a cell in hypotonic solution, it becomes fat like this. If it is isotonic, it does not. There is nothing, no change. It is as it is, as you can see. And if you place it in hypotonic, it shrinks. Right. Again, this is just for you to understand what exactly happens. Okay. because there is no video or anything where i we can explain this concept right this has to be explained theoretically right i have a couple of questions for you now and it would be great if all of you could answer right so that i know you understood uh, do we need to write this question no 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 you don't need to this is for your understanding just simple questions i just want to know that you have understood what is hypertonic and isotonic and things like that right okay suppose i have uh, i'll just draw containers like this okay this is going to be called our container p and this is going to be container q okay. and suppose i have let me start simple okay one spoon sugar and i have uh what is this green okay i have two glasses p and q Okay, in one glass P, I have one spoon sugar plus water, and in Q, I have only water. Okay, now tell me which of these? I'll write my question here so that it is clear. Okay, which of these is hypotonic? You can take your time and answer. 
okay refer to what is hypotonic see the situation and then tell me which of these is hypotonic is it p or is it q yes i'll tell you I think it is Q. I'll put on it. Okay. So one answer is Q. Okay. Others? All of you can answer. Q. Okay. I'm a Q. Jadeep, sorry, I didn't hear your answer. I'm at Q. Okay. I'm at Q. 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 It's Q. Okay, so all six of you answered Q. And you have answered correctly, right? So hypotonic basically means that less amount of solute. So when I'm comparing only water and uh, one with sugar and water, of course, only water does not have any solute. So it would be hypotonic. So excellent. Good job. Okay, now let me increase the level of difficulty up one notch. Now, instead of only water, I have, uh, what color is that? Okay, you put whatever color it is. Right. I have two spoons sugar plus water. Now, which is hypotonic? Um, can I answer? Yes, yes, everybody has to answer. P. It's P. P, P, P. Okay, everybody answered P together. Excellent. So you basically have got hypotonic concept clear. Okay, which is hypertonic then? Q. Um, hypertonic is Q. 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 Ma'am, I'm still not Q. clear. Why is it P is hypertonic? Yes, yes, Neil. Tell me, tell me. What are you not clear about? How is P hypotonic? P is hypotonic because it has one spoon sugar and water. Oh, I meant how is Q, P hypertonic? Okay, which which situation are you talking about? This situation or the previous one? Ma'am, this situation. How is the answer same in both questions? No, no, I changed the situation. No, that's why. Now Q has okay, two spoons sugar plus water. It's not only water. Last time it was Q was hypertonic. Yes, last time Q was hypotonic. Why? Because it had only water. Okay, so suppose I have sugar plus water and I have only water. So which is hypotonic? Tell me. Uh, Ma'am, so in the hypotonic one, the concentration of solutes is more. Am I right? No, Sorry, no. Less, it's less, less, it's less, it's less. Correct. Less. Yes. So if I have so taken water. you a glass of water, what solute is there in that? Uh, Ma'am, sugar is the solute. So actually sugar is hypotonic. Yeah, but I have given you a glass of plain water. I did not put sugar, salt. I did not put anything in it. So that's hypertonic, isn't it? No, no, no. Hypertonic is when solution is more. The concentration of your solute is more that is hypertonic okay ma'am so in hypertonic solution it was okay mama so then water is hypotonic got it ma'am. got it huh so if i give you a glass of sugar and water and a glass of only water the only water has zero solute right so zero solute one will be hypotonic there is nothing no solute so of course it will be but water but water what Water uh, in hypotonic is there is a lower concentration. Okay, correct. Yes, concentration of solute, right, ma'am? Solute, hypertonic. yes. Hypertonic. Ah, that is so what I have. Shouldn't water be the one who's hypo? Uh, uh, who's hypo yes, ma'am. Shouldn't water be the one? Uh, yeah, water is the one who's hypotonic. I thought correct, you were saying that water is hypertonic and sugar is mm -hmm. uh, hypotonic. So I was getting confused. Okay, how can water be hypertonic? No, 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 no. This will be hypotonic, right? Everybody answered Q, I thought. So Q was correct in the previous situation. Yeah. The previous oh, situation. Mama, I thought everybody said P. That's why I was. No, no, no. I changed the situation and then I changed the question also. After that, the answer to that was P. Right? Okay. Okay. So read the definition once more, Neil. It says hypotonic or whenever you say tonicity, you are comparing the amount of solute. Okay. You are not comparing amount of water. 
it's always solute if you see zero solute yes ma'am hypertonic has more solute and hypotonic has less solute correct right so in the second situation my first question was which of these is hypotonic so this time it became p why because p has one spoon sugar whereas q has two spoons sugar right so now p has less solvent or solute sorry so the answer to this now is p right and then my next question was which of these is hypertonic that was my next question and uh, i think the two is hypertonic q correct q correct excellent right so of course if i'm saying p is hypotonic which means the other one by default would be having more solute or it would be hypertonic right okay now that you have got this i'm going to now take uh take the question up one more level up right i'm going to increase the difficulty a little bit more and give you a situation okay so this is the one which is commonly asked like if you get osmosis questions you will get questions on this uh, this scenario itself the scenario being you will be given grape okay a grape okay why did it become grape okay right they'll give you one grape and they'll put it in different solutions and then they'll keep asking you what happened to the grape okay this is the most favorite kind of question which is asked okay so now you tell me if i have a grape and i keep it in water what do you think will happen will it swell uh, grape i it will think swell now it will okay. swell so like so it will uh, wait wait take your time uh, ma'am it will ma'am it will swell it will swell no i yes. think uh, i think grapes will shrink so it is exosmosis okay 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 ma'am it should be should swell ma'am because the grape has some solute also inside it am i right because it has sugar uh ideally no grape if you look at it just like that it has more amount of water raisins have sugar the one you are telling about is raisin because raisin is yes ma'am but still there is some okay. so though not much there it will swell to some extent am i right ma'am i think it will shrink okay 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 i think i increase the level of difficulty little bit extra only okay yeah i think uh, it will stay the same yes jayad you are correct you are the only one who gave the correct okay. answer right shouldn't it is well ma'am because the grape does have some solute inside it no 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 because whenever i eat the grape i don't get the taste of water uh, just water i get some nice taste so that comes from the solute of course of course yeah yeah but we look at it from a uh, some amount you know we are not looking at a microscopic amount right now okay ma'am so, uh, so if you say that way then even if i take example of a glass of water and a glass with one spoon sugar and water then uh, water it by itself will have some amount of solute mixed in it right some minerals some things yes, thing. so i then again what you are saying will be applicable in all situations right so we don't go to that we look at it in totality okay so grape in general is considered to be water only okay very minimal amount of sugar of course sugar is there but minimal okay minimal amount of sugar okay if you get confused you can take this now right so when i place this grape in water the correct answer would be there is no change nothing happens to the grape you can try it you can yourself when you eat grapes i don't know if you do this when you eat grape uh, you put it in water and then i have actually seen my grandma do this every night she puts the grapes in like water and it's very small grapes in the water and in the morning they become very big acha she must be putting raisins just check if she's putting no it's actually grapes i've eaten it okay theek hai because what you are saying is done for raisins and when you do that no the next morning that raisin becomes a grape again so whatever you are saying was applicable more for raisin right okay okay so the answer to this situation was no change okay now when you talk about raisins we'll come to raisins now this you can take down you can take this down because this is important uh, uh okay yeah you can take this down 
this is usually asked so whatever questions you get on osmosis they'll give you a grape and then they'll give you some kind of solution and then they'll ask you what happened to the grape did it swell did it shrink or did did it undergo no change okay second uh, one uh, this is our first situation second situation we usually talk about is when you talk about raisins right uh no wait let me cover grape only first wait 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 there is one more situation for grape let me cover that Okay. Okay. Now the same grape. What will happen if I place it in sugar solution? It will shrink. It will shrink. Others, what do you think? Shrink, swell, no change. Uh, one sec, one sec. If you put it in sugar solution, right? Yes, sugar solution. Um. I think shrink. Okay. Um, I'll take your time to answer. I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Of course, you all have just learned this, right? So I'm not expecting quick answer from you. Take your time, but just try to give me a answer. Your opinion can be wrong also. Chalega. I think it is going to swell. No, it's shrink, 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 shrink. Okay, final answer. Swell or shrink? Shrink. Okay. Shrink. Okay. Correct. Shrink. 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 ठीक है. Everybody answer. Only one person has not answered, and that is Neil. Neil, your answer. Shrink. 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 अच्छा. ठीक है. Right. Yeah. So now again, like I said, you consider the grape to be water, and then this has sugar. right so which has more solvent or solute this has more solute right so this is your hypertonic solution so what happens if i place something which has more water into a hypertonic solution it will shrink correct and this is how you get raisins actually this is the exact procedure for making raisins so they what do they do is they take grapes and they put it in very very concentrated sugar solution so that grape shrinks like anything and it becomes very sweet and when you again put this raisin back in water it swells up again and becomes like a very hydrated like uh, but then if you put it in that uh, sugary water it will shrink and it will become sweeter so when you put it back in the normal water does that does it boost the sweetness no not quite little bit it loses not the full thing but sugar still stays because water molecules will move in and out no sugar still stays so what happens in when you put it in extra extra concentrated sugar solution some amount of sugar gets inside but when you are putting it in normal water the sugar does not move water moves in and out okay Okay, then the third situation for grape. This is a trick question. This you can answer quickly. Ma'am, let us say second rule remain. Ma'am, can you just please erase the uh, uh, erase the what what what? No, nothing, ma'am. I thought you only erase the whole screen. So I was just saying, please erase the first one and don't erase the second one. Acha, okay. No, no, no. I won't erase. I'll wait for you to take it. Right. My third situation is again. I'm taking a grape. and this is just like a trick question i'm giving you a hint also <laughs> okay and i put it in salt water what will happen uh, it will shrink it will shrink uh, put what in salt water a grape 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 yes grape uh, my original answer shrink for sure okay others ma'am shrink ma'am shrink shrink Excellent. I think he has got it. It doesn't remain the same, ma'am. No, it is shrink. No, because it is I, in I sugar. Think. In sugar water, it becomes bigger, and in salt water, it will shrink. No, no, no. Sugar no, water no. also shrinks. Who said bigger? No, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Sorry. Ah. Sugar water it shrinks, and in salt water also it shrinks. But in normal water, it will stay the same, right? Correct. Yes. So there is no situation where the grape will get bigger. There is no situation like that. the grape won't get bigger that situation is only there for raisin like for raisin there is no situation where it will shrink further ma'am unless you put it in an extreme concentrate 
Ah uh, no no still it will not shrink further, or a grape will not swell further unless there is like some uh, there is you know the cell itself has lost its ability inside to uh, work then it might burst or something like that but majority of the cases it will not swell up further or shrink further. Okay, so yeah, here the trick question was that it does not matter what the solute you are adding is. Okay, the, if you are adding sugar, you are adding salt, you are adding bone vita, you are adding tang, or you are adding whatever under the sun, any powder you are adding under the sun, water is going to move out from the grape, right? You can oh, do. Yeah. Mamul, what is the trick question? That I don't understand. Yeah, the trick question was I change sugar to salt. No. Ha. Ah, so because I said that in sugar solution, the grape shrinks to become raisin, right? And then I told you if I put it in salt. So that was a trick question that whether you get confused that, okay, will it swell now or will it still shrink? That's why it was a trick question. Okay. Yeah, you can take all these three down. Huh? They're important. This is like your, uh, you can say, I don't know, you play games or anything. You can say this is your cheat sheet, cheat code sheet. But, but mama, 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 is an art exam. exam. What, what, what? Sorry, I did not get it. Are we allowed cheat sheets in any exam? <laughs> no, no, this is like your, uh, what do I say? Uh, uh, see, when you read your book or anywhere, this is not given explicitly anywhere. It's not given stated correctly or, you know, there is no table provided as such that if I put grape in water, no change. This in water, then it will shrink. That's why I'm giving it to you. You can use this cheat sheet, but only if you use the exam time to write this down. Have to write this down on the back of a paper. No, 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 I did not mean, uh, okay, okay, I think you all don't know how <laughs> cheat sheets are, okay, I did not mean that you can use this in your exam like a, a, you know, paper to take with you, I meant that you can use this to understand or to know what exactly happens, so now that, now you get the complicated question or a huge paragraph with the same thing written, you know that the answer is going to be no change. You know that the answer, whatever solute I put it in, the answer is going to be it will shrink. If I put sugar, salt, bone vita, tang, whatever powder you know of, you put any powder in water, any solution in, or any solute, even chemical compounds, you mix it with water, the grape will still shrink. Nothing else will happen to it. Okay. Right. Basically, uh, yeah, yeah, Jaydeep, tell me. And the first question is an example of an isotonic solution, right? Uh, yes, yes, correct. Isotonic, correct. Okay, I'll write that also. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll write that. This is isotonic. Case of isotonic. This becomes hypertonic. This is also hypertonic. Like I said, for grape, there is no example for hypotonic because there's no condition where it will swell up further. There's no such condition. It already has maximum water content. It can't take in more and swell. Okay, once you're done with this, tell me I'll write it for uh, raisin. Or you can try writing it for raisin on your own. And then you can cross-check with, with me once I write that. I wrote this down. Wrote this down. Okay, Neve. Someone is writing it.
Dan? No. No, almost. Okay, okay. Done, ma'am. Yeah, if you are done, what you can do is write the same three things again and write it for raisin instead of grape. Make it raisin and see what happens if you put it in water, what happens if you put it in sugar solution and what will happen if you put it in... Uh... Okay, I'll have to change one example. Yeah, what happens if you put it in salt solution? Right, you can try that. Actually, don't write the third one. Write only the first two. Third one is okay. for raisin. For raisin, not for grape. Yeah. I'll write here. Yes, you are writing. Okay. For raisin, write one and two. Right, so let me change the first one. This will be okay. If I take a raisin and I place it in water, okay, I'll change the shape. Also. Right, looks a little shriveled, and I place it in water. So what will happen? It will swell. Yes, ma'am. Swell. Right? Everybody agrees, right? It will swell. If, if you want a raisin, yes, it will swell. Yes, yes, for raisin, yes. Okay. And what is water then in this case? It is is it a isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic solution? Uh, isotonic. It's a hypotonic. Hypotonic. Okay, I'm asking for... Yeah, wouldn't this normal water just be isotonic and not hypotonic? No, 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 no. See, whenever you talk about tonicity, no, you're comparing two solutions. Now you tell me if raisin has sugar more and water is minimal. So now which has more solute? Among the two, raisin has more solute, so water so, has... Raisin. Raisin. Raisin, right? So automatically water becomes hypotonic. Oh, okay. This is why I was saying. in the second one, it needs to be specified. But how many, uh, how many, how much sugar is there in uh, both of them? I mean, is it equal or where is it more? No, 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 no. That much level detail they don't go to ask you. So for they what? For the second one then? Equal size or it remains same? For raisin, you're telling? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. For raisin, it will be remain same. They don't ask you so much technical details that how much sugar is there in this and that. You can assume it to be equal in both. It will be a isotonic thing. Right? It will stay the same. Okay. So, yeah. Here it was. Uh, which color? Yeah. Here water is hypotonic. Right? Whereas in second, if I change it, Right now, here sugar solution becomes isotonic. You can safely assume that the amount of sugar in raisin and the amount of sugar here is same. Because usually they will not ask you this situation. So this you can just assume. They ask you situations where you get confused, which is when they will put raisin in uh, salt water or they give you something like that. Or they will say, I put 
grape in this kind of water first and then removed it and then placed it in this water what happens so you'll be completely confused if you don't know the first flow right yeah raisin i told you to ignore for the third one is because one has sugar and one has salt so for that you'll have to how much solute so salt what will happen no no not required that is beyond your scope right now not required but in sugar it increase right sugar it will stay the same raisin will stay the same nothing will happen to it okay and it will um, swell okay normal swell when you place it in water right these are the only two situations for raisin you don't need to remember any more yeah just give me five minutes to write it down ओके Yes, okay yeah then i can yeah these are just extra questions this i'll skip for now this because i asked you already what i wanted to theek hai then let us do one more slide on cell wall and then stop because then next class i'll have a little bit less to do <laughs> right so cell wall uh, why are we talking about cell wall right now is because we were talking about the coverings of the cell so you have plasma membrane here right for any cell but in some cells mainly plant cells you have another covering which is called a cell wall outside the plasma membrane okay it is present outside and the plasma is it the it also there in this uh, bacterium uh they are different kind of cell walls they are not the cell walls we are talking of right now because the materials or the composition is different for bacteria and for plants okay right so yeah they are present usually um, most of us have this confusion as to where is cell wall present so cell wall is the first outermost covering okay it's like a cell wall first then you will have your plasma membrane right and then there will be cell contents here so remember that outermost is the cell wall then plasma membrane okay right then yeah i told you this lies just outside the plasma membrane what is it made up of it is made up of a material or a you know it is a type of a polymer which is called cellulose right okay and you need to know what is yeah it is freely permeable means it allows everything to pass through everything and anything to pass through means freely permeable and its functions are basically it will provide a structure it will give the plant plant cell its shape so it gives it a structure it provides strength so oh, sorry it becomes scent okay it is strength right and it offers protection to the cell so whatever if there is a virus or there is any kind of attack bacteria virus any attack it first has to pass through the cell wall and then the plasma membrane and then enter the cell so it's like a double layered protection offered to the cell right and of course it exerts some amount of wall pressure on the contents that i'll tell you next class what is wall pressure and why i included it here that we'll discuss a little bit in detail okay yes right so this is another term which is pertaining to okay i'll have to clear this for that another term pertaining to osmosis strength okay this is something which happens in living plant cells okay here again you can split the word as plasma 
which is usually the cell fluid or the cell matrix it is what is called ideally okay and lysis usually means loosening or breaking down okay please make note of this because this will help you understanding what plasmolysis actually means the little technical term right so when a living plant cell loses water through osmosis which means ex osmosis is occurring water is moving out it shrinks okay the cell contents shrink away from the cell and that kind of a cell is called a plasmolysed cell so this is in extreme situation suppose this is your plant cell okay and this is your plasma membrane right so if there has been a lot of movement of water molecules outside like majority of it has moved out what happens is the cell content shrink and it becomes like this that's when it's called a plasmolysis cell okay yeah you can take this down for now what i'll do is next class i'll explain this in detail and i have to explain what is wall pressure also so i'll take some time explaining that so that would be possible right now Okay. Right. Once you have taken this down, uh, make sure that you are, you know, scanning your notes and sending it on the group, and uh, make sure to revise whatever we did today, and then come for the next class whenever it would be somewhere next week. Okay. Yeah. yeah so if you have copied this or if you have done writing this this slide you can leave not an issue if you have other classes मेक श्योर टू रिवाइज ऑस्मोसिस बिफोर द नेक्स्ट क्लास वाई बिकॉज इफ यू स्टिल हैव एनी डाउट यू कैन गेट इट क्लैरिफाइड देन एंड देर इट्स राइट सो मेक श्योर योर यू अंडरस्टैंड रीड रिवाइज ऑस्मोसिस वंस मोर because osmosis is the only important part in this chapter other things uh, you will just have to memorize there's not much to understand or you know uh, apply it's more of theory apart from that okay okay yeah if you're done you can leave ha huh? see you all next class bye 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 ma'am bye ma'am bye ma'am thank you ma'am bye ma'am thank you ma'am Anvesha, are you still writing? Done. Oh, sorry. I had actually I, I forgot to mention I was I'm done. Done. Take it. Okay. Yes, you can leave then. We are also done. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.